So, Daniel, um, can you please explain a little bit about the, the new flat panel speakers that you have here? Yes, right. It's so the flat panel loudspeaker technology is, I think, very old in the start up in the 20s or so that the basic of most technologies are developed. But there is a problem. Most flat panel loudspeaker technology are flat in a construction way, but you can't use them close to wall. That means you have a flat loudspeaker, but you can't save space. And that, today, it's what we want. You know the, the 5.1 system, a uh, wave field uh, synthesis system, you need so many loudspeaker channels. And you want to save space. And maybe you could use flat panel loudspeaker technology, but the flat panel loudspeaker at the market, in most cases, are not uh, working well close to wall. Okay, so how have you uh, solved this problem? How have you overcome this? Yeah. The problem here is that the normal flat panel loudspeaker uh, radiates sound from the front side and the back side from the membrane. And if you bring this loudspeaker close to wall, then you have problems with reflection from the back side and the wall. And that means that you lose in a low frequency level, uh, low frequency reproduction uh, sound pressure level, and you have a coloration in mid range. And so the first thing that you need to solution, solute this is that to uh, avoid the radiation from the backside by an enclosure. It's a really old thing, I think it's since 1940 or so, we know use an enclosure to prevent the, back, uh, the interference between the back uh, sound radiation and the front radiation. By this you can solve this problem, but you have another problem then. Think about an, an air pump, to, to maybe for a bicycle you, you want to, to, to bring the air inside the wheels and so on and then close the hole in the front and then try to, to pump. You, 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 you realize that, that there is uh, an, an infinite compression of the air possible. And this is the same like in this case, you have a membrane and you have a closed enclosure. And the membrane like, it tries to move in and out in the enclosure. And inside the air volume is working like an air spring against this movement. And so you have to solve this. Yeah? And we have solved it by an, a system that have a driving uh, motor system that is very strong. That means that you uh, uh, overcome the, 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 the force of the air spring inside by a an, an stronger, an uh, stronger driving system uh, of the loudspeaker. So you have made a more powerful uh, yeah. coil driver. Yeah, that's right. And that, that, would, that is the, the, the second step. Enclosure first step, second step. You have a driving system that is with a, with a strong force factor. And now think about uh, you have, an, you have a membrane surface that has to be, uh, or you need a, a big size membrane to move a, a really a, a big amount of air. Yeah. And if you only take this driving system and, and a big membrane and you put the driving system only maybe in the mid or so, like companies with NXT or so with a DML flat panel loudspeakers, then you have the problem that the the movement of the membrane isn't like you want. You want a piston-like movement. That the whole membrane surface is moving in phase, all parts there. The problem is you have you don't have it because the stiffness is not enough of the membrane, and so it, it breaks in vibration, uh, 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 partial vibrations, and that is not good. And therefore, we say, okay, step three is you need a good distribution of the driving system. Yeah, maybe there are also old technologies uh, in, in 1925, there was a Blatthaler principle by Siemens and Halske. They had a an, uh, an, an driving force system distribution like a Meander, okay, you yeah. know. That is a little bit better shown than uh, if you have only in, in a mid or so in driving force system attachment. And now the fourth step is that you also cut the membrane into smaller pieces. That means now you have your enclosure, you have your driving system with a high force factor, you have a good distribution of the force, uh, also the, the, the driving force over the whole surface, yeah. of membrane surface, and because of the uh, uh, smaller membranes, they are working all together like a big membrane, okay. but you do not have problems that there are, uh, uh, that, that there are partial vibrations and so on, and that is a good thing, because then you have really that what you want, a piston-like movement of the whole membrane surface. Yeah? Yeah, and so we developed it, uh, as you can see there, with many small drivers. Here it's so that uh, we have a two-way system, that means that uh, 
drivers from the left and the right side three uh, 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 rows have the the low frequency reproduction and only the, the middle row is for the high frequency reproduction. Yeah. But these these groups of drivers are behaving each as one speaker effectively. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And we, our aim was to to have the same acoustic. Uh, properties like a normal loudspeaker because I think on the market the loudspeaker quality is, is good enough for the home hi-fi or a home cinema system but they want flat design yeah, yeah? because you, you do not want maybe for a 5.1 system five normal uh, loudspeakers big loudspeakers yeah? you want something that is maybe uh, uh, possible to integrate it maybe in, in, in furniture or so or in, in, in a picture and so on you don't realize that it's a loudspeaker but you have your sound and it's nice also for theaters and so on or old buildings there is not allowed to, to, to put or to, to install a loudspeaker on a wall yeah because it's looking bad and so on not nice design and so you can uh, put it in or integrate it in a nice picture 